Twitter. So we'll talk about CLI, command line interface of a router. Now, what is a CLI basically? CLI is a text-based interface where a network engineer, typically a user, can type some commands and hit enter. As soon as he hit enter, the command gets fed to the router or switch or firewall's brain. Okay. So it's very simple to use commands we will be having. So before we go deep dive into CLI, let's talk about two parts of the network devices. The first one is called control plane and second one is called data plane. Now what is control plane? Basically control plane is like a brain of a router. It's like a brain of a imagine human being. Data plane is like the hands and legs. Data plane is like the hands and legs. So without the control plane, can data plane work? Is it possible? No. Without data plane, can control plane work? It can work. Good. It cannot work. Without one hand, we cannot survive. Then, so without data plane, control plane can still work. So control plane in a device is almost equal to your brain of the router where it controls the entire network components of the device. Here we are talking about routers, so I'll say router. But control plane is also there in switches, routers, firewall. Even on your phone, you have control plane. TV also has control plane. CPU, computer, everywhere we have control plane. For example, I take my phone here. The motherboard, what I have here, right? Behind the scene, motherboard, processor, those things comes under control plane. Display is your data plane. So almost any networking, any device you take, there will be two planes. One behind the scene, the one with which you interact always, which does the job. Huh? Example, tha, mera. My deep dive. Example, make you do <laughs> so in control plane we have routing protocols routing tables packet forwarding and other processing we'll talk about these one by one later on data plane is actually helps you in forwarding the packets actual packet forwarding packet movement everything will be done by data plane these people work control plane gives the work to data plane Without control plane, they cannot do anything. Okay. So now that's all about your uh, control data plane as of now. We'll uh, move further. Yeah. Now, before talk about the actual commands and all, we'll understand how do I name these ports. Basically, Cisco Catalyst switches. Here I have taken example of Cisco. 2960 XR model. Basically, it is a leading switch manufactured by Cisco. Cisco refers switches physical in connectors as either interface or ports. Nothing but we call these guys. Here we have the port. These are called ports. Where you actually connect your Ethernet cable. Okay. Now, how do I name these ports? The naming will be something like this. Speed of the port space slot number slash port number now speed can be of either ethernet or fast ethernet or gigabyte ethernet ethernet means 10 mbps fa means 100 mbps gigabyte means 1000 mbps so we can have three different speeds we can have more than this also as of now we you so the first name always represents the speed of that particular port. It can be either Ethernet or FA or GIG, Gigabyte Ethernet. Now, this is called your slots. See here carefully. This is your slot. Okay. This is your one slot. This is second slot. We have two slots here. So we always name slots from slot zero and slot one, mostly. So here we have slot zero, slot one, slot two, and slot three. We have three slots. If somebody is asking you, what is the port number of 
this port, the first port. And imagine all are my Ethernet port, which means 10 Mbps port. So the answer will be Ethernet 0 slash 1. It will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 ports. What if someone asks you this one? It will be what? Ethernet, ETH, 1 by 2. It's always numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or it can be 0, 1, 2, 3 also. You'll see a number written over there actually. They can see physically, they'll write it. Okay. So it's simple. Now, what if I ask this one? And I'll tell it is a fast Ethernet port. So you can say FA. FA, short form of fast Ethernet. 0, 1, 2. 2 slash 1. Easy. So naming them is very simple actually. Now you understood when you saw SE, SA0, serial interface 0, which is 0th port. So in SA, we have only one, we don't have slots, just one port we are having. That's why I said that. This part is clear. Next is your accessing Cisco CLI. Now I told you with the help of CLI, we give command to my devices. But how do I name my CLI? Or how do I communicate to the CLI? Now we can communicate to the CLI using three different methods. The first one is called console, where I am going to use a console cable. Second one is your telnet, where I am going to use a Telnet. Telnet is a configuration basically. Third method is your SSH or I can say secure shell. So using console cable, it looks like this. The blue color cable. The sky blue color. So using console cable, you can access the device. Imagine my device is next to me. Here only I'm having. So to access the CLI, I'll be using console cable. We'll do this in lab today. Now, what if my device is not here? It is somewhere else. It is in US or California or Sri Lanka, somewhere it is. In that case, we have to either use Telnet or Secure Shell. This is for remote access. Okay. So, out of these two remote access, Telnet is completely not encrypted. Secure Shell is completely encrypted. Okay. And Telnet uses port number. 23, secure shell US port number 22. This is not physical port number I'm talking about. It is the logical port number. I'll explain it now. So now you understood. Whenever device is remotely located, it's somewhere else. In that case, for remote connectivity, we have to use either telnet or secure shell. So device is next to you means we'll use console cable. That's called console access. So there are only three methods using which you will be accessing the device. We'll talk about that later on. In the lab, you'll understand basically. So we saw first one is console, second one is telnet, and third one is secure shell. Port number is 22. Port number is 23. It doesn't have a port number. Not applicable. Now, when I say port number, I don't mean the physical port. It is the application port number. So, I'll give you a small understanding on this one. Imagine that I'm having a computer. Okay. I'm having a computer. And I'm trying to browse internet from this particular computer. It is internet. And I have opened around four tabs in this. I have opened the first tab is called my Gmail tab. Second tab, I use YouTube. Third, Facebook. Fourth one, Instagram. And my computer's IP is 10.001. It's 10.001. Now, when I try to communicate to Gmail server, YouTube server, Facebook server, and Instagram server, in those packet, what will be the source IP address?
आंसर यू आर हियर ओनली राइट सो आंसर करो ना व्हाट इज द सोर्स आईपी एड्रेस इन दिस एंटायर स्क्रीन आई हैव ओनली वन आईपी एड्रेस देयर आई एम आस्किंग क्वेश्चन सो इट्स 10.001 normally see don't involve now public and private ip and all it's not required i'm just giving you an example here okay now don't tell me sir it is private ip address how can it go no don't ask that question so 10.001 so imagine all traffic went all went and all coming back so when this traffic comes back from gmail youtube facebook and instagram what will be the destination ip address it will be the computer ip only right 10.001 so all packets are coming inside my network interface card using the ip of 10.001 but if you have clearly seen if i go to my google chrome web browser and i open gmail youtube facebook and instagram in four different tabs if i refresh four tabs the tab will not change right youtube always loads in same tab gmail always loads in same tab now how is it possible Like return traffic comes, all are coming to ten dot zero zero one. Now, how does my computer knows that this traffic is for Gmail, this traffic is for YouTube, this block, this traffic is for Instagram? How does he knows? Using the port number. So port number is the official. I can tell port number is the official endpoint of an application traffic. It's almost like IP address. I told is equal to your home address, right? With IP address, anyone can come to your home. But in your home, you have four rooms, and you four people stay in four rooms. If you want to talk to only you, then you should have his, your port number, the door number one, door number two, door number three, door number four. Inside one house, understood. So, this port number is the logical end point of an application. This part is clear. So on the router or devices, you will see like this, huh? Which one? Ah, it is remote only here mentioned, na? No? Remote access it is. You are saying the same thing. So here, if you see carefully, on behind your router in the lab room, you can see on every device behind, you will be able to see a console port. Console, console. port will be present. Okay, where you will put your uh, console cable. We'll skip this part. Okay, not required. Okay, now for doing all these things, to taking console connection. telnet connection secure shell connection you need to have a software right the software name is putty or some people call it as putty anything is fine putty is a software using which you do all these tasks your console your telnet your uh, ssh all this comes under putty software now how does putty looks like putty looks like this <coughs> A computer once I install, I'll see two computers like this. Put it in application like this, okay? And it looks like this. A simple stuff. Here you can see telnet. Here you can see secure shell. Serial is equal to your console, okay? So you'll see serial means console. Telnet, telnet, secure shell, secure shell. See carefully when I choose this option telnet. 
you will see it's changing port number. Here, if I choose SSH, port number changing. For serial, it's not port number, it is speed. These are all, these are all default settings. So you don't need to remember all these things. Only remember Telnet port number and secure shell port number. Okay. So Putty is the software. Okay. So this diagram actually explains you, as I told you, Telnet and secure shell. Whenever device is remotely located, we can use it via internet. I can communicate to them. So obviously it requires some passwords, right? When you access your device remotely, it's good that you should have a password. So whenever you access devices using Telnet and Secure Shell, it is recommended to configure password for these devices. Console code, it's okay, but console also has password in the real time scenario, but still console is next to you, the router. Nobody else can access it. Okay, physically you have to access, huh? Talent also has password. It has, this is applicable to both Talent and Secure Shell. In both, we have for password. No. Encrypted, I told. Secure Shell is fully encrypted. Telnet is partially encrypted. I can say not encrypted. Which means in Secure Shell, when I try to enter the password, right, the password will go as a plain text. Sorry, password will go as an encrypted text. But in Telnet, it will go as a plain text. So anybody can capture that, they can reuse it. So secure shell is more secure compared to Telnet. Okay. Clear? We'll, we'll do lab now. <clears throat> yes. So now as of now, remember only three points. So console, Telnet and Secure Shell. Console is used when device is next to you. Telnet Secure Shell when device is remotely located. Okay. <clears throat> Great. So next is your configuring Cisco iOS software. Now how do I configure my router or switch or firewall or any networking devices of Cisco. So whenever you try to log into the device, right? It has only three modes. One is called user mode. Second is called privilege mode. And third is called configuration mode. When I say user mode, user mode is like, it lets you to issue uh, non-disruptive commands and display some information. So user mode is like, you can only see limited information of the devices. You cannot configure anything from that mode. You cannot see everything from that mode. You can see only limited part of your router. That's called your user mode. Okay. It is like a guest coming inside a house. They cannot go everywhere. They can see only your place. Privilege mode means imagine your brother comes to your home, your home brother comes, but he can go anywhere, right? He can see all the rooms. He can sleep anywhere he wants. So that's how privilege mode is. Privilege mode means, or we can say enable mode. In enable mode, we can see everything of my router. All configurations, all outputs, everything we can see on the enable mode. But we cannot change anything. Right? Configuration mode is like you in your house. You can do anything in your house, right? You can break a wall. You can put something else. You can change TV. That's like your configuration mode. Configuration mode means whenever you want to change certain things that will be in configuration mode. So we have three modes again, user mode, enable mode, configuration mode. User mode means it lets you to see only basic information of the devices. Enable mode, you can see almost everything. I mean, it can see everything of your device configurations, outputs, everything. Configuration mode means where you can configure something where you, if you want to configure IP address or something else, uh, OSPF or ACL, anything to study in future, you have to be in configuration mode. Okay. Now, how do I represent this? I will be, you'll be seeing the symbol. This symbol means enable mode. 
this symbol means sorry this symbol means user mode this means enable mode this means configuration mode okay clear now as of now first i will be in which mode user mode in the user mode i will type enable i'll go to enable mode from enable mode i'll type configure terminal i go to configuration mode if you want to go back just type exit on your keyboard exit means you'll step you'll step back so it is like from here you jump here then you jump here then exit exit you know it down it's very important then we'll do with the lab now So user mode, enable mode and configuration mode. Okay. So now I'm going to drag and drop one router. Try to use always 1841 model. Here it is. 1841, drag and drop. I click on this router. 
Do you see anywhere CLI? Command line interface. Here it is CLI. This is how our real time router boots. It will give you display all the information. It's like computer. When a computer boots in the initial stage, the black screen, you will see a lot of things, right? So those things are here like that. Okay. At last, it's going to ask you one question. Just type no for this one. I'll type no. Enter. And which mode? Which mode I'm in? Don't tell completely. User mode. Okay. Now, how do I go to enable mode? Type in. Not in. Type enable. You tell me. What's the command? Enable. I typed enable. Hit enter. I'm in which mode now? Privilege mode or I can say enable mode. Both are same. Simply tell enable mode. It's okay. Now from here, if you want to go to configuration mode, then what's the command? Let's wrong. What's the command? Tell full command now. Tell me. What, what you guys have been noting down since half an hour? Write this command. From user mode, I type enable to become enable mode. From enable mode, I go to type uh, configure terminal. I go to configuration mode. Now give me the right commands. I'm in which mode now? User mode. Word command type enable mode kill. Now. Okay. Word command type to go to configuration mode. Huh? Show me your notes. Ah. What? You're half sleeping, everyone. Configure terminal. Okay. Now, that's it. Now, what if I want to go back? Type exit. Type exit. We'll go step by step, back side. Okay. Easy to go to use this CLI, basic information. Now, we will learn one by one. We'll start with the changing the host name. First lab, changing the host name. See, by default, any router you take, you will see a router as the host name. Where is the host name? It is the host name. Okay. What if I want to change it to my, what if it is in a Bangalore office? This router is in Bangalore office, building number three. Okay. So I want to change this host name to BLR building or BD3, because then only I can understand, right? When I log into a router, just to make me understand as a human being, that's how I can understand. If all on a device are showing a router, router, how can I understand? Just for our simplicity, for human purpose, we have to change it. So to change, go to enable mode, go to configure mode, and command is host name. Type host name, BLR, BD3. You can give anything. You can give my name, your name, Rhinos, anything we can give. Well, as soon as I type here, what happens? See? The command, the host name got changed now. Now anyone logging in to this device, they'll understand. Okay, he is in BLR 
or PLR BD3. That's how you change the host name of a router. Easy, only one single command. Host name BLR BD3. Now, secondly, we will try to configure enable password. See, there is one command called, I think it's reload. Let me check it. Reload. Yeah. Okay. There is one command called reload. Imagine there are some commands that can actually impact your devices. One of the command is reload. Reload means what? The command will reboot the entire device. So if I try to type reload command in any in user mode, user mode is, imagine user mode is for some people who are not a network engineer. Enable mode is for network engineer. Configuration mode is also for network engineer. So in user mode, what if someone types reload command? It will not work. Basically, this will throw error saying something. We'll talk about that later. DNS. This command will not work here, but the same command works in enable mode. If I am in enable mode and if I type reload, this command will ask me question whether you want to reboot the device or not. Yes or no. If I put yes, the device will go to reload state. But rebooting a device is a risk, right? Because your entire service will go down and come back. Imagine behind that router, we have thousands of computers. If that device reloads, which is connected to the internet, all thousand computers will go bad. They'll come back, come back after three, four minutes. It's the risk. So rebooting a live router is not a good idea. Let's wait for some time. It'll take three minutes to finish. So don't you guys think? So there are certain commands which works only on the enable mode. Some commands, these kind of commands only works on enable mode. So don't you guys think when someone types enable, so simply we can type enable and type reload, right? It's not a big deal for me. I, if I know the one command called enable, I can type enable, I can reload the command, finish. Now imagine, let's go with the story. Imagine you are a network engineer, you work for a company and she is your friend in the same company, but she is a non-IT person. She knows only one command called reload. Okay. And she came up to your device, your desk, and she was sitting next to you only. We went for a chai. And you left your router in this state. In this state, which is enable mode. She knows only one command to play. That command name is reload. What you will do? You type reload. And she will go. What will happen next? You will get email. Termination email will get. Saying that everything has lost. Please go home. Take rest. <laughs> <laughs> so next day what you do? You keep in this mode and here. Next day she learned two commands then. Enable also reload also. Now she comes up to your desk and she and type reload. Again, termination email. No. No, no, what to do? Now she can't that can what you can do. You can go to configure and you can create a password enable mode. I'll say enable password. I'll say rhinos123. This command enables the password for the enable command. And the password is rhinos123, which is only known by you. You will not share the password to her. This command actually helps you to enable the password for your device. So if someone types enable, it lasts for a password. Hey, give me the password. Now, third day, you fix everything you went. Now, in this mode, you went for tea break early. Again, she comes. She has only two commands. Now, she types enable. That's it. Now, frustrated she is. What is the password? She'll type your date of birth. Your name, her name. Nothing works out. Later on, she just... She just goes out. Goes out. Okay, next, next time, we'll see. Okay. Finish. Now imagine you typed enable now and you logged in. You logged in Rhino123. Normally when you type password, it will not display asterisk symbol star dot nothing will be displayed. If I'm typing something, 
it will type but it will not show anything okay i typed command password already now next day what happened cctv camera is there now you kept a camera in front of your desk again she comes now she reboots on the same day she will easily get captured and you went on a break again she came all the way to your desk now she cannot reboot immediately because camera is still on now what she will do she knows one command now she learned fourth command from me the command is show running hyphen config show running hyphen config this command displays the running configuration of the device so whatever commands or configuration we have did so far everything you can see in this one command if i type this command it will display me the running configuration of my device okay now she types this command and immediately in the first fifth line or seventh line she can see the password again she left back to her desk tomorrow she comes with a cap now she knows the password now again you went for a break again you went for a break she types enable she knows the password rhinos rhinos 1 2 3 and reload that's it over khatam again you what happened you lost job so how many times you lost job so now again it's a risk see we tried enable password we tried pass something something nothing works now the point here is we have one more thing called enable secret instead of using enable password if i use enable secret enable secret rhinos 1 2 3 this will actually encrypt my password while displaying it so when you display the things right your password will get encrypted which means now she cannot see rhinos 1 2 3 and all okay okay can someone talk online i want to check my speakers hello can't hear yeah they are fine i yeah, think they're fine i can hear you guys also it is audible so okay now now what you will do you have to remove the enable password first of all right you have to remove the old password and enter the new command enable secret so you will go to configure terminal and you type no you will type no command no enable password this actually will remove the password enable password no keyword is to remove something which you have already configured okay simple command i type no enable password now i'll type enable secret rhinos 1 2 okay i come exit now if i type now again she comes next day she is typing so running configuration that's it now she is becoming mad full protection ho gaya hamara now she cannot check out the password okay let me quickly check ha tell me ha huh? what is no no enable password just keyword no will come the beginning
skip this part. Clear. Now we learned about username changing. We learned three modes, user mode, enable mode, configuration mode. We learned about enabling password, enabling secret, and checking the running configuration. We sit, we did a lot of things. Now, finally, we'll go with the configuring IP address on a router's interface. Okay. So in today's lab, you'll be doing all these things with that IP configuration also. Now for IP configuration, I'll take two routers now. 1841, 1841. I'll connect them using cables. Now by default, you may not be able to see the numbers here. FA 0 slash 0, 0 slash 0. You cannot see. To view that, you have to click on options, preferences, Fifth option, always show port label. This has to be enabled. See behind here, it go hidden now. If I click here, you can see number. So you have to make sure it is enabled so, the, so to see the interfaces. Now I have to configure IP address. Let's configure IP here, 10.001 to 5500. Next is your 10.002 to 5500. Simple. Okay. Now to configure an IP address on the device, by default I have to go to configuration mode. So I'll go to configure terminal, which is equal to my brain of my device. So configure terminal means what? I'm into the brain of the device. Now once I type configure terminal, see these interfaces are like your hands and legs. Okay. FA0 slash 0 is one interface, my one hand. Neighbor of one more guy is there in that his hand is FA0 slash 0, his interface. Now I am in the brain of my router. From brain, I have to go inside my hand. How do I go inside the hand? The command is interface, type interface, interface number. See here it was, it is now showing as what? It is showing configure now in bracket. Now when I type interface FA0 slash 0, here it shows what? Configuration interface. It is you can either read ULTA interface configuration or you can type configuring the interface. Now I am inside what? I am inside the interface of FA0 slash 0. Now how to configure IP address? The command to configure IP address is IP address only. IP address. What is the IP address I am going to give? 10 dot. Simple. Now by default, my router's interface will be in shutdown state. So we have two main devices in networking, switches and routers. In switches, by default, the interface will be in up state by default. But in routers, it by default is in down state or shutdown state. To bring it up, you have to give the command called no shutdown. The command no shutdown will be used to bring up the interface. Okay, only three commands to configure the IP address of an interface. Now here, again CLI. Should I type yes or no here? The first question. Type no. Now give me the command for second device now. First, enable. Configuration nahi hai. Configure terminal. Now, interface F. It is not F, it is FA. FA. Then, Oh, one or two. I am in this R1 router, router one. It is two, right? Here it is L10. Two. Then, then, that's it. Once I read that, see, 
both side it became green color now now it is working now can i ping neighbor ip from here you know what is ping right to check network connectivity can i try pinging him from here is it possible in this command if i try to, to ping 10.001 the it will say is invalid inputted in this place in caret symbol which means the ping is not working here because ping is a verification command we cannot do it from in this mode it is configuration mode so go back can i do it from here no again it's a verification command for anything you want to verify you have to be in enable mode or user mode if you see exclamation means ping is working dot means ping is not working you see five exclamation here so i success rate is what 100% five out of five which means everything is good all are working perfectly all right understood how to configure this online do you have any doubts or question on this part Okay, so your lab starts now uh, before 10 a.m. You have to finish the following labs. Online, currently computer labs and send me screenshots without fail. These things and uh, configuring the IP address also you have to do. If you have laptops, you can sit here and do both of you guys. Here only you can sit and do. No need to go there. I'll show. Finish this lab. After that, we'll see. We'll see. Console cable. Okay. I'm going to send these commands in chat. So please reply. <laughs>